Howdy, howdy. Hello. Hello. Hi. And welcome to... But It Was Aliens. Ah. How do you do? I do well, my friend. This is the extraterrestrial comedy podcast where we probe paranormal events to determine for the questionable benefit of our listeners as to whether those events really were paranormal. <laughs> We take it in turns to host, and the co-host has no idea what's coming up each and every week. That co-host this week is my good friend and nemesis, Mr. Granville Moonwalker. And that means that I'm your host this week. My name is Kev. I bet this episode is paranormal. Whoa, big words. (laughs) Hold on, no, it is. Yeah, 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 it is. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. It always throws me off when you're really positive. (laughs) <laughs> today we are heading into the formative years of modern american history my friend uh, why what do you mean why 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 what why because that's where the evidence lay today i'm just going to be negative now you don't like me being positive i'm just <laughs> going to be negative all, i didn't say i didn't like it say. i just said it froze me off Puts me off my game. Okay, fair enough. So what have you got for us today, Kevin? (laughs) Well, we can't really cover today's subject without first giving a little explanation of their father. Aaron Burr, sir. I am your father. (laughs) No. (laughs) Aaron Burr, sir was an American Revolutionary War soldier who eventually became a lieutenant, colonel colonel, and whom had a little dalliance, shall we say, with one Theodosia Bartow Prevost, 10 years Burr's senior, my boy, in Mr. Prevost's absence. Jeez, boy! (laughs) You see, Mr. Provost was married to Jacques Marcos Provost, who was a British soldier, and whilst Mr. Provost was away fighting the future Americans, Mrs. Provost was offering the family home up as a meeting and resting place for those same revolutionaries Mr. Provost was fighting. Yeah, so it's I think it's Jacques. Jacques. Marcus. It's not really a British name, is it? It's more French. Well, the British Jean kind of colonised all Jacques. sorts of places. Jacques. Marcus. America, Canada, which had a French influence as well. So basically, bon. the, the British, the French, and the Spanish were out there causing havoc, the Dutch to an extent as well. Anywho. The home was called the Hermitage in Hohokus, New Jersey. Mr. Provost died in 1781, two years before war's end. Burr and Mrs. Provost, openly together by that point, were married within the year, at which time Burr was about 26, and together, on June 21st, 1783, the happy couple had one daughter, Theodosia. In 1791, Burr, sir, was elected to Senate, beating out his predecessor and Alexander Hamilton's father-in-law, Philip Schuyler. Burr, sir, would run for president in 1800, losing out following a tie and vote to Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson! And it is this tie that resulted in separate ballots for presidential and vice president in future elections president and vice president that is <laughs> the tie only really occurred because voters at that time originally didn't specify which participant they wanted as president and which as vice <laughs> bit of an oversight but hey ho did they have a, a little jewel to count their gloves they didn't. Had a cups. <laughs> well, as many know, due to the musical, Alexander Hamilton would scupper Burr, sir. At several points, their paths would cross, ultimately leading to a duel during the final year of Burr's vice presidency, in which Burr, sir, as vice president, fatally shot Hamilton. 
Dueling was illegal, and whilst Burr, sir, was never prosecuted for this, it did ruin his political career. Burr, sir, was arrested on charges of treason in 1807 around an alleged plot to create an independent country in southwestern USA and Mexico with either a workforce or army of 80. But Burr, sir, was acquitted. There was no evidence. Burr, sir, eventually fled the United States for Europe in 1808. People were burning effigies of this man. Burr had to go. Sir. This is unrelated to anything, but Burr was a massive womanizer and loved sex workers, keeping records of such visits, including how much Burr paid them. He be shaggin', he be shaggin'. I've still not watched Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I know, it's mad. I'd have thought that would have been quite up your street, considering you've listened to many of the songs. I've listened to the whole soundtrack, I have it. Just haven't watched it. You should it. sit down one night and treat yourself. I will one day. Do you know how many times I've said that? <laughs> At least three times on this show. And about 200 in real life. <laughs> real life. Like the show is not real <laughs> the life. The show is fake, people. You aren't really hearing this. It's all in your mind. This is your internal monologue. Sign up for the Patreon.com. <laughs> Forward slash one of his aliens. Why would he keep a record of how much he's paid each sex work? Either he just loved the sex work or this man was like the accountant of all accountants and wanted to count every penny. I'm going for the former. Do you reckon that's how he rated which ones he liked the best? Who he, he'd, once he'd had an experience, he'd check his book, see who comparable he had paid to what level to determine how much he was going to pay that one. Or oh, you weren't up to the standard of um, Harry Mary, so Maybe. you're not going to get how much she got, but you were better than Dirty Sharon, so. Maybe that was his bonus, because there's no way, surely, they are having sex without him paying first. So surely he must have paid something. Oh, in advance. And then, yeah. Well, maybe he and did then... it on like a, a performance agreement. You get 25% now. I'll decide how much you get on top of that. Up to this amount, depending on how good you are. And then that's his record. <laughs> <laughs> I paid this lady 2,000%. <laughs> must have been good. I need to track her down. He'd go in the local pubs and advise the locals as to which ones to go for and which ones to avoid. Ah, oh, Bruce, man. He'd Bruce give is... all the wrong information. <sighs> right. It's, it's mad, isn't it, to think completely um, off that topic that politicians would just duel back in the day? Like, imagine I'm... today, although perhaps we're not too far away from that with... Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to Certain find out why it's, but... why it's illegal. What, to duel? Yeah. It's murder. I mean, if you both accept... Like, yeah, but murder yeah, is still cool. a crime, regardless of if the other person agrees to it. In most countries, at least. You're like, nah. Let's is have it, a duel. Is it though? To the death. We've both agreed. We've both signed. They have a duel. Gentleman's agreement is what they had. Exactly. And then Burr, sir, with that pistol, was like, whoosh, bang. Burr absolutely was. There's a lot of debate over whether Hamilton actually shot at Burr or not, because Hamilton's bullet went up in the air, and it's not clear whether that's because Burr hit him first and it knocked his aim, Ooh. whether he's a shit shot, or whether he was doing um, the way, the honourable thing to do in a duel was to waste your shot and hope the other person wasted them too, so you're both like, okay, shake it and move on with life. You're both alive. So it's not it's not clear... But Hamilton did have his spectacles on, which if you were going to waste your shot, so I think like you, why would you put them on? It's like Han Greedo, who shot first? Oh, Han shot first. <laughs> Absolutely Han shot first. So who's Han in this scenario? Burr. <laughs> Burr is Han. Aaron Burr's daughter, Theodosia Burr, named after her mother was born in 1783, as we said. These were revolutionary times. On May the 18th, 1794, at 47 years of age, Theodosia's mother, Theodosia V1, passed away when Theodosia V2 was 11. 
Burr, sir, was a doting father and firmly believed that young women should receive the same education as young men during the time period. Burr, sir, continued a thorough education for Theodosia as both parents had initially instigated and surviving correspondence between the two in the form of thousands of letters evidences a very close relationship as long as they lived. Hamilton had actually targeted Burr, sir, years earlier for supporting the concept of intellectual equality between men and women, by the way, and Burr, sir, was a massive supporter of equal rights, regardless of heritage, which may have been part of the reason for his alienation from our founding folks of America. That and the fact that Burr, sir, may have tried to create his own country. Theodosia would grow to be an intelligent person and in 1801 would marry landowner Joseph Olston. The couple were the first recorded couple to have taken their honeymoon at Niagara Falls. In 1802, splish splosh motherfucker, the couple had a son who they would name Aaron Burr Olston. Theodosia... Abba. Theodosia would accompany Aaron Burr, sir, to Ohio in 1806 and indeed would support Burr, sir, at the treason trial during 1807. As we know, Burr, sir, fled for Europe shortly after and Burr, sir, was gone for four years. Fleeing is allegedly, truthfully the action of an innocent man. I mean, if someone's trying to kill you... Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out. Exactly. Action of an innocent man. I know how you said... uh, Don't really need to say that, to be fair. But the first recorded couple to take their honeymoon at Niagara Falls. Yeah. How do you record that? Well, first recorded... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm leaving my answer at that. No, the, how, there could have been people before them, but it wasn't documented. Yeah, but They're I the mean, first recorded, you, as in someone wrote down, or it's documented in letters that someone went there for it. I was about to say, how do you document a honeymoon? Like, Maybe they no took a photo official, in front of it, and uh, there's no couple that took a photo beforehand. I was going to say, there's no official registry for honeymoons, is there? Maybe there is. Have you had a honeymoon? Never been married. Then you wouldn't know if there's a secret honeymoon register. That is true. <laughs> Do you know if there's one? I've never been married. Lies. Is it a lie? Yeah. Married me. <laughs> there is a photo if of that us p- cutting yeah. your wedding cake. If that picture is to be believed. <laughs> <laughs> then you've been married. Where did you take me on a honeymoon? Where didn't I take you? <laughs> Uh, same place got married. Nearly got you a free chicken wrap as well. <laughs> uh, let's not explain that. <laughs> Aaron Burr, sir, spent time in London and from England ventured into Scotland, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, and France. I've just alienated a whole bunch of our listeners there with awful stereotypical poor accents. When Aaron Burr, sir, returned to America in 1812, Burr, sir, returned to New York, where Burr, sir, assumed the surname Edwards. This was Burr's mother's maiden name, which Burr, sir, likely used to avoid comeuppance from his mounting debts accrued, for example, through leasing land and possibly hiring a workforce slash army. Allegedly. Truthfully, Theodosia, meanwhile, remained in South Carolina with Alston. Being super close, You'd expect that Theodosia would return to Burr, sir, the moment he arrived back, but tragedy sadly struck, as tragedy does, when Theodosia's 10-year-old son passed away with malaria on June the 30th, 1812. Hmm. The loss of Theodosia's son hit Theodosia hard, as it would anyone, but Theodosia became extremely unwell. Theodosia remained too unwell to travel until December 1812. 
the quickest yet easiest on the body way to travel from South Carolina to New York, some 700 plus miles, was by boat at five to six days travel. Even today, it's a near two hour flight. The War of 1812 had begun between the USA and UK, which technically went on until 1815 by the way, and by December, Alston, as the now governor of South Carolina, would not be able to join, though he did request safe passage from Britain despite the war. There remained rumour of trouble along the banks of North Carolina! Theodosia and a family friend, a trusted doctor who would keep Theodosia safe, eventually set off on the Schooner Patriot for New York on the 31st of December, 1812. So five to six days to get from South Carolina to New York. Yeah. <clears throat> Two hour flight today. Yep, America is big. Can you imagine, like, if people that were alive then got brought back to life now and they're like, yeah, I'm just going to do this in two hours. Like, what sorcery is this? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Which? <laughs> we must duel. Do you think you'd win a duel? What kind of duel? Against someone from that time. What, a gun duel? No, literally just fisticuffs at dawn. Mmm. You were losing, son. <laughs> what makes you say that? They're rugged back then. Yeah, but we're they're honourable as well. <laughs> you saying you're not? <laughs> not when it comes from to in his eyes. I'm honourable unless it's life and death. If it's life and death, I'm kicking people in the nuts. Sand in the eyes, kick to the balls. <laughs> yeah, I'm biting. I'm a biter. I'm gonna be pulling hair, nipping, nipple twisting. I was about to say titty twist. Oh. <laughs> uh. I'll be challenging people to rock, paper, scissors and kick them in the nuts when they're on number two. Rochambeau. Boom. I'm going to give them a swirly. Also, people were smaller in the past than they are today. So I might have been Kevin the really tall in this time period. you're a giant now, so fuck it now. <laughs> They'd be shocked. Oh my God! It's King Kong coming over the hill. I think the Statue of Liberty is moving. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I was alluding to you wearing a dress, but <laughs> either or. Both work for me. Um, I mean, it's pretty clever to change your name to Edwards as well. Get Again, yourself, that sort uh, of thing, yeah, harder to track back then. Exactly. How many people knew that his name or his mother's maiden name was Edwards? Probably not. Well, more to the point, who suspected that he changed his name? Exactly. Slippery customer. He might have had a shave as well. Back then, could have had a shave. Said, but my name's Edwards. Slapped him with a glove. Psh, and been on his way. Indeed. How dare you. Psh. So that Schooner Patriot never made it to New York. What? The Patriot was seen and indeed left to pass freely by the British due to Olsen's request on January the 2nd off of North Carolina's Hatteras, but the Patriot was never seen again. There are a few theories as to what happened next, one being the frying pan shoals, which are 28 mile long shifting submerged ridges or banks, which have caused many a shipwreck. We're going to focus on two other theories. Firstly, bad weather. That night of January the 2nd, we have documented evidence that a gale scattered British fleets around that area. The next day, there were hurricane force winds which would have struck the Patriot severely. South Carolina archaeologist James L. Mitchie has suggested that the Patriot most likely sunk between the evening of January the 2nd and 8am on January the 3rd. 
Burr sent search parties to Nassau and Bermuda, though interestingly, not the Outer Banks where Theodosia was last seen. And with that, our next theory is pirates. Ooh. She's going to be part of uh, the crew. Yeah. Find out <laughs> that she's not part of a crew. She is the crew. Thirsty Theodosia, the biggest rum She's drinker on the boat. Captain, captain Thirsty Theodosia. <laughs> captain Dozier. Changed the name. Dirty Dozier. Took the Theo off. Fooled everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Runs in the jeans. Captain Dozier. Arr. Arr. Awfully bad luck to have a woman on board. I'm just waiting for the, <laughs> the pirates' quotes to start. And she uh, cut her hair short, mm-hmm. put an extra jacket on. Mm-hmm. I was about to say softened her voice there, but toughened her voice up a bit. Mm-hmm. And then started calling everyone Jack. There we go, Jack. And uh, Captain Dozer was born. Captain Dozer. The... Uh, Inspiration for Captain Barbosa. Indeed, yeah. So it's it's interesting to me that Burr sent search parties to the um, well-known pirate locations, Nassau and Bermuda, yes, rather uh, than places where you think the ship might have wrecked. Why would he do that? Did he have information? She already told him that she wanted to be a pirate. It's been my dream all like, along, Burr. He was like, fuck's sake, she's done it, hasn't she? She's gone and fucking done it, claiming she was ill, and she's fucked off to be a pirate. <laughs> and then he heard stories of uh, Captain Dozier, and he had know. no idea it was his daughter, because she dropped the Theo. <laughs> Fooled everyone. <laughs> everyone. And she had no idea who he was, because he... <laughs> Changed his name to Edwards. Uh... Passed each other many a time. Look familiar. But <laughs> didn't recognise <laughs> each other, because they changed their name. Exactly. <laughs> The Patriot Are had you Burr. No, I'm Edwards. Sir. You Theodosa? Captain Doser. Good day. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Mighty deep voice you've got. <laughs> and what of it? The Patriot had actually been privateering for several months in the West Indies and had a hold filled with booty. So the ship had a paint job, covered its name and stowed its guns below deck. Deck. Nobody would know. Had a paint Change job. Change the name. Change the name. <laughs> no one knows. It's a theme. Pirate Dominique. You, a.k.a. the Bloody Babe. Second in command to uh, Captain Dozier. The Bloody Babe operated in the Carolinas and in one account from an 1872 book by Charles Etienne Arthur Gayar called Fernando de Lemos Truth and Fiction a novel is said to have pillaged the Patriot after it was battered by a storm you killed the crew and made Theodosia walk the plank Fernando there was something in the water that night my butt is tight, Fernando. <laughs> Good old you. Kill the crew, you. You. Kill Such the crew. Such a confusing name. Dominique, you. Who, you? No, you. At this time, a nefarious group of crooks called the Carolina Bankers would <laughs> prey on nearby ships. But if no ships wrecked on the sandbanks, the group would walk a donkey with a light around its neck back and forth on the shore. To ships out at sea, this resembled a ship safely docked on land, bobbing about. Fearing the storm, ships would move to join on the dock. It's a trap! The approaching ship would quickly hit sandbars and become stranded, and at this point, these hybrid pirates would swarm in for the kill. The ships would be robbed with no survivors left behind. But if there's no survivors, how would Ooh, anyone tell the tale? Exactly. Someone uh, strapped themselves to a couple of sea turtles. 
Indeed. But I ask you, do you kill the crew? Not me. But did but you? you? I didn't. Did you? You did. No, I just told you I didn't. But did you? No, it was you. No, it wasn't me. It definitely wasn't me. If it wasn't me, it was you. Must have been you, because it wasn't me. Ah, always you. Um, <clears throat> did the donkey get fed well? Donkey? Was it well looked after? Didn't tell me. Did it try to run away at any point? Well, it might have been running away as it bobbed along the shore. Because if but not... that kind of did its job anyway. This donkey's a pirate. Donkey pirate. Pirate of the crew. Absolutely, donkey is a pirate. They confirmed after this donkey. Had an eye patch. Brought them more riches than they could imagine. Buried the booty for later discovery and expenditure. It's a lucky donkey. 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 <laughs> Newspapers. <laughs> Newspapers. <laughs> later reported of deathbed confessions for example from an alleged member of the carolina bankers in the alabama mobile register in 1833 who said that he was involved in the taking of the patriot for the effects murdering all there were a few other claims, such as a noblewoman washing up on shore in 1813 and being buried as claimed by Mr. J. A. Elliot of Norfolk in 1910. Mr. Elliot. Get your freak on. There were another two confessions from pirates at point of execution in Norfolk during 1820. In 1833... Pirate Old Frank Burdick gave a similar claim of murdering Theodosia and crew, specifically stating that Old Frank was the pirate to hold the plank for you, aka the bloody babe, as Theodosia walked it. Captain Dozier, no. <laughs> Old Frank said that the noblewoman asked for news of her fate to be passed to her father and husband and stated that the pirates left a portrait of the woman behind. Who drew it? Leonardo DiCaprio. Drew it like one of his French girls. <laughs> Make sure you get my boob. <laughs> there is an extravagant tale of a Karankawa Indian chief finding Theodosia and carrying her to shore whereby she gave them a locket inscribed with her name and told the chief that she was the daughter of an important white man misunderstood by his people and forced to leave his country as she died in the chief's arms. But that one just has nothing behind it, so I won't go into detail. One I will detail, however, is that of Dr. William Poole, a physician from Elizabeth City who made a house call on Nag's Head in 1869. Remember that portrait left behind by pirates? The house owner, one Mrs. Polly Mann, a widow of a fisherman. Inexplicably, applicably, uh, blah, 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 blah. inexplicably, I'm saying that wrong and I don't yeah. know why. Inexplicably, <sighs> you got it right then. Yeah, inexplicably gave <laughs> <laughs> Dr. One more time. Paul a portrait of Theodosia Burr Olsten as payment for the visit. The good doctor. Asked how this came to be in Polly's Polly's possession. <laughs> Too many peepees. Polly's possession, to which Polly explained that her old man, Joseph Tillett, used to be one of those pirate bankers and gave Polly two black dresses and the portrait after robbing the Patriot. Though Tillett claimed the ship was already abandoned when he arrived to loot what was left. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Members of Theodosia's family subsequently confirmed the likeness of this portrait to Theodosia, though I believe from my probing that none of these family members had actually seen Theodosia in person, only other portraits which this portrait admittedly did resemble. 
Theodosia's sister-in-law, Mary Alston Pringle, couldn't be sure that it was Theodosia, but no other candidates have been identified. That portrait is now on display at Yale University. Did a horrible death for one already so traumatised by loss, possibly on the coast of North Carolina, which was an area occupied for many years by Native Americans, create such a level of energy that a spirit was left behind? (laughs) You better start believing in ghost stories. Because you're in one. Hi, you're in one, Mr. Moonwalker. Captain Dozier. As my blood is Do red you and my... reckon this is where the legend of the woman in the white dress came from? Out at sea. Hmm. That's an interesting shout. Very interesting <laughs> shout. Maybe we should probe that one at a later date. It all stems from Captain Dozier. Oh, God. You're going to keep on like Captain Dozier. Yeah, that's sticking, isn't it? <laughs> Can you... Uh, at what point do you believe that a portrait is enough for payment? Like, can you imagine I take my car in for a service? <laughs> it gets done and they're like okay that'll be I don't know however much is it, it is for a service on that car and I just give them a stick figure drawing I was going to say the exact same thing here's a stick man boom there you go off you go there you go just frame it Yeah, <laughs> you've, you've got to know a fair bit about art and the artist haven't you to be able to accept that as payment yeah I suppose if you're giving someone a Banksy then you're giving them some fucking money I would not be giving away a Banksy Although for a service. Although, Banksy's tend to be on the side of walls and whatnot, so you're also going to lose some money taking that wall down and ruining whatever it's been done on. <laughs> if you... Banky, give Here's a... a wall. Banky, see, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a wall with a stick man on it. <laughs> Worth hundreds of thousands. So, yeah, I don't know why she just believed that this photo would be enough. Was the... Uh, was it a doctor? Someone was. That went to visit, she paid the doctor. Dr. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I assume I'd be uh, slightly miffed. But I better give me some money. <laughs> Do you reckon the doctor turned up be having been called in general, like back in the day? Or do you reckon the doctor went around knocking on people's doors trying to score some business? <laughs> <laughs> you need some medicine? How's your legs? Let me but see yeah, your foot. You were... Uh, you go and tell the doctor or you get someone to tell the doctor you're ill and then like four days later the doctor arrives and he's like hi and they're just dead <laughs> shit takes any portraits they've got I'll take this for payment it's a call out charge picture the scene picture on a moonlit night at Bald Head Island a village on the edge of North Carolina as all is silent and that moonlight reflects off the softly crashing waves, you notice a figure in the distance walking along the shore. A musky smell hits the air. You can make out that the figure is a lady and as she nears, you notice that she's wearing a dress not of this time. You ask yourself why someone dressed so finely would be wandering along the shore, potentially ruining such an expensive costume, but you accept what you see and carry onwards. As you near, something unusual catches your eye. It's almost as if you can see that same moonlight through this figure. You look down and see that there are no footprints in the sand. You fill your pants and turn to run. Later, you hear stories that some, braver than Granville, have stayed to watch on and have seen the figure chased along the shore by three other dastardly figures in ragged and ripped clothing. This is what many people have reported seeing at Bald Head Island. Now... 
I would probably fill my pants and run. But <laughs> Granted. At the same time, I think if the figure looked at me, I'd be too scared to run. Would you though? <laughs> Would you though? Gone. Yeah, probably gone. <laughs> Ain't I'd, nothing stopping us from running in that situation. I, I definitely wouldn't be staying to see three other figures chase her. <laughs> but um, do you reckon it that scene could be interrupted? Or it plays out regardless. Yeah. Like, imagine you see that and you shout like, Oi! And, they and then they stop. stop. <laughs> Every single one of them stops dead and they and all just, turn in sync yep. and look at you. I mean, at that point, I'm shitting and running. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Double pill filled pants. Imagine you do that and they don't, and then you just watch them disappear. Mm-hmm. I wonder how that played out. Do you see what happens? Do they disappear? Maybe if you interrupt them, them, one of the spirits takes over your body and you end up involved in the scene. So you just end up running down the uh, beach or the shore. You're either chasing or being chased into the water and potentially you could drown yourself if you don't come round. Depends how she died. Oh, no. Because that could be horrid. If you're following the movements of the ghost, you could either trip and then your body would react to said stabbings or mm -hmm. anything like that. Or you could find yourself doing the motion of the stabbing on the beach. Yeah. Obviously, people looking on would just yeah. see a body doing something to sand or just... Like Nightmare on Elm Street style. Rocking about. But it's not something I want to go to Bald Head Island to uh, find out. So <laughs> Let's do a road trip. Anybody lives near there would like to investigate and let us know please do so please be probably careful. stick a gopro on your head yep make sure it's Definitely. waterproof just in case and we take no responsibility for what <laughs> happens but send us the footage go live and let us know make sure your loved ones know that if anything happens to you to send us the footage 100 percent. i mean we hope you're okay obviously but if you're not <laughs> make sure they send us that footage the spirit of Theodosia has never spoken to anyone. Just spoke to me. Bloody hell. That was a cold shiver and a half. <laughs> Theodosia's watching. We've discussed before how uh, if you talk about spirits, it might offend them and they might travel through technology to you. you got to think, if that spirit is near a computer at Baldhead Island, that could... <laughs> travel through the internet and pop out in your air son but anyway <laughs> is Theodosia's <laughs> business to be forever unfinished as she longs to reunite with her father with her father has Theodosia been twisted with time and now become hungry for revenge is Theodosia, perhaps not even aware that she has passed, left to repeatedly wander the shore, looking for New York night after night? This is the tale of dear Theodosia Burr, sir, the bald head island ghost. Um... Going back to the three figures that are chasing her. Yes, raggedy figures. <clears throat> These three raggedy figures oh, are raggedy, yeah. chasing her. Yes. Would it not be that these also died at the same time? Possibly. Otherwise, why would we see three figures chasing her? Two reasons are coming to mind. I hope I don't forget the second while I was talking about the first. The first, maybe they regretted this action for life and because they were sinned, it's punishment in death to have to relive your sins and things you regret over and over if you were a bad person, like a form of hell. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they were caught and murdered, as many pirates were, and 
Therefore, this was their last significant action. They were in the area. They know Theodosia's there. <laughs> Trying to get her every night. Maybe we're just seeing her loop. Maybe. Her last Maybe, actions. yeah, rather than ghosts in the traditional yeah. sense. It's just a loop that replays every night because something bad happened in the area. And that bad juju is just showing the loop. Mm-hmm. Until some good juju is done in the area and takes over the energy. So put that GoPro on your head, dear listeners in the area of Bald Head Island. <laughs> and go and do some good stuff on the shore. <laughs> Real good stuff. But don't break the law. No, no, no. If you do, you're wearing a GoPro. You are buggered, my friend. <laughs> buggered, buggered. But make sure you send us that footage. <laughs> we won't profit off it. We may upload it as a special feature on Patreon.com. But it's for your benefit. 100%. That is actually it today. So, in summary, we've today covered Theodosia Burr, sir. To cover Theodosia, we first very briefly covered Aaron Burr, sir, reminding ourselves that Aaron Burr, sir, was a revolutionary soldier and nearly founding father who was banging a host, providing shelter to the revolutionaries whilst her husband was away fighting those same revolutionaries. Burr, sir, and Theodosia V1 had a baby, Theodosia V2, and were intelligent, doting parents. After Theodosia V1's death, Burr, sir, ensured a full education for Theodosia, who was pretty much his best friend. Burr would go on to famously high noon Alexander Hamilton in a duel over years of disagreements and differing views, which would see Burr's political career spiral downwards. Burr would possibly seek to start his own independence with a small army in the West and Mexico and was tried for treason but acquitted. Burr fled the United States in 1807, leaving Theodosia behind. Theodosia had married in 1801, honeymooning at Niagara Falls and had a son in 1802. Burr returned to America in 1812, settling in New York. New York! under his mother's maiden name as the honourable and trustworthy Aaron Edwards. Theodosia, though, lost her son to malaria in June 1812 and was too unwell from this event to travel to see Burr until December. When Theodosia finally did set off on the last day of 1812, Theodosia was never seen again. There was reportedly very poor weather and storms, and archaeologists have suggested that it is likely that the Patriot ship carrying Theodosia shipwrecked during early January 1813 in poor weather, possibly involving underwater banks. The Patriot had been privateering prior to this journey, and may have had booty within. Booty? Did this attract pirates? We covered several deathbed confessions aligning which may indicate piratical involvement and indeed we are left with a possible portrait of Theodosia that does support this claim. Did the Carolina bankers, the bloody babe and old Frank Burdick murder Theodosia and crew, even making Theodosia walk the plank? We know that horrid experiences and deaths have been linked to lingering spirits, and today, visitors continue to see the spirit of Theodosia Burr Olsten on the shores of Bald Head Island. We covered the typical sighting of Theodosia. We didn't cover this, but just for closure, Aaron Burr, sir, would marry a widow again in 1833, one Elizabeth Brown Jamel, but Burr piddled away her fortune on his pursuits, and Elizabeth divorced Burr on the grounds of adultery four months later. Man loves sex. Burr died on the day the divorce was granted, on September the 14th, 1836. I'll just show you that nags head portrait of Theodosia, Mr. Moonwalker, along with a confirmed portrait on your right, as we get ready to conclude on whether this one was Spookies. If you'd just like to check these in the notes. Okay, so this could be where the uh, white dress ghost came from. Do I believe 
that this was Spookies. Well, I'm not asking you to conclude, but are you saying that it was Spookies? I'm just reading through the evidence okay. all over again. I'll say when you conclude, and... when you conclude, you can conclude on what you think happened to Theodosia as well as whether it's now Spookies, if you like. Okay. Do I believe this is Spookies? No, I don't. Whoa. I think... The portraits do look alike, though. Yeah, they do. I think what happened is it was a mystery as to what happened, and people just came up with the story about seeing a woman in a white dress. Mm. Could have been a trick of the eye for one person. Oh, and then all of a sudden it spreads like wildfire and the story gets embellished and embellished and embellished and embellished. Yeah. They tie it back to this incident of the ships going missing and they believe that it's her. What I think happened to the ship is that it just got caught in the storm and yeah. unfortunately sunk. I think we're going to be on a similar page, but I'm just going to add before I do summarise where I'm at that I went to a nice seaside town with Moxley a couple of weeks ago and my partner. You saw a ghost? Not a ghost, no. What we did see, looking out to sea, there's an effect, and I forget what it's called, though we are going to cover something to do with this at a later date. But um, basically in the horizon line the water was in the sky rather than on the floor and boats were upside down in the sky now if you cool. saw that out at sea you're thinking you're seeing a ghost looked awesome i'd never seen it in my life before but now i understand because i'd read about it that's pretty cool kind yeah. of want to see it either that or i saw a ghost ship <laughs> upside down ghost was floating in the sky basically ghost ship but yeah I'm not saying that it was Spookies and I won't beat around the bush and try and make you think otherwise. This episode, we know by now that I love covering historically accurate cases and basically making the whole episode a history lesson before sprinkling some paranormal juice on top. And that is exactly what I did here. We don't know what happened to Theodosia and even if a wreckage was found, we probably never will now. We don't know exactly what Theodosia took with her on the boat, so we can verify so we can't verify if she took a portrait to give to Amber, I guess. Who knows? That leaves us with no option but to take a leap of faith as we're forced to conclude, and for me, there isn't enough evidence to say that it's Spookies. I do think that the ship wrecked, but I also do have a suspicion that opportunistic pirates were involved. I know these stories could have been told and exaggerated after the fact, but there are quite a few accounts from ex-pirates and that, combined with the Patriot possibly having treasure on board, gives me a little tingle. So yeah, I think it, they probably wrecked. Maybe people tried to abandon ship and then pirates found the empty ship and looted yeah, it and that's a good point. added their own tales on to make them seem like big bad pirates when actually they just chanced upon a ship where people had abandoned, thinking they were going down in the storm. Yeah. Because there was the one pirate that said the ship was already abandoned. Yeah, and just took yeah. Things from and it. now I, I queried that at the time. Of course, you're going to say that, aren't you? But maybe that pirate was actually the honest one and the others weren't. Yeah. Those damn bankers. Any final thoughts from yourself, Mr. Moonwalker, before we close out? None. Then that is a wrap for today. Thank you for listening to... But it was in you. If you're interested in supporting the show, there are a couple of ways in which you can do this. You can get your hands, feet and other areas on our official But It Was Aliens merchandise by heading on over to butitwasaliens.co.uk, okay? And checking out our store, where we sell a few bits and pieces ranging from clothing and mugs to a drinks coaster. Another way to support the show can snag you access to our bonus episodes, aka Side Probes, where once per month we investigate a non-alien event at times too wild for all but the most hardy of Side Probers to hear. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash but it was aliens and if you want to hear what that's all about, stick a few pennies in the pro pot and support us to continue doing what we do. 
If you've got suggestions of future cases for us to probe, you can drop us a message on the X Twitter at But It Was Aliens. Or you could leave a message in our Facebook group, Extraterrestrial Towers, a publicly private secret group you should tell all your friends about connected to the But It Was Aliens Facebook page. Mr. Walker is giving me a very funny stare. I can't work out he's about to interrupt me if I stop talking. So I must not take a breath at all. I must keep on talking. That is it for this episode. So until next time. I really hate the fact that they've changed Twitter to X. You could just shout X Twitter! <laughs> or you could do it exactly as you always did. <laughs> oh, until next time. Oh, that's my pants filled. Did pirates refer to their booty as booty? The truth is up there. Hashtag proud.